is good and all the time lift up Christ and tell the world arise and shine for Jesus is coming there seems to be a disequilibrium between your speech and your deeds. How can Jesus come while we sit down? Perhaps this time let us conglomerate our passivity and activity. Arise and shine. For Jesus is coming. Oh, lift up Christ and tell the world, Amen. David would say, delighted and excited was I when they said unto me, Come now and let us go into the house of the Lord. In fact, one songwriter says, he lifted me up from the deep muddy clay and he planted my feet on the rock to stay. In other words, divinity located David in the mire of disgrace and allocated David in the choir of praise. My prayer this morning is may divinity locate you in your insufficiency and allocate you in divine solvency for our moral capacitation and spiritual resuscitation. Journey with me to the book of Luke chapter 15. Verse 1, 2, 12, 18, and 19. Dr. Luke records and he says, Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. Verse 2. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Verse 12. And the younger of them say to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them. Verse 18 says, I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. May God add a special blessing upon the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Now, church, subscribing to the fundamental principles of hermeneutics and exegesis, which is the critical interpretation and explanation of the biblical text. Using the lens of oh, using the lens of literature, theology, sociology, and anthropology, you will come to realize that Matthew draws back the genealogy of Jesus back to Abraham. In fact, he says Jesus is the son of Abraham. Take note. Abraham is the father of a specific nation, which therefore renders the Jews as the sole custodians of salvation. But when you analyze Dr. Luke, he draws back the genealogy of Jesus back to Adam. Take note, Adam is the father of the whole creation. In other words, Jesus is not in the business of redeeming a specific nation. But Jesus is in the business of redeeming the whole creation. 
Salvation is inclusive and not exclusive. Okay. Now, critically analyzing the book of Luke, my pastor, you realize that Dr. Luke emphasizes Christ's proximity and association with the ostracized and the marginalized. What is it with Jesus and little people? The master has a tendency of turning nobodies into somebodies. The master has a tendency of picking up trash and turning it into treasure. For your mess can become a message. Go to a text. The young man then says, give me. Are we together? Yeah. What does he say? Give me. Now, anthropologically and historically, in order for you to receive an inheritance, someone must die. <laughs> so death is a prerequisite for you to become a recipient of an inheritance. Therefore, by the younger son asking for an inheritance, he wished that his father was dead. The moment you commence to obsess over what God can do for you instead of who he is, you are a prodigal in waiting. Because you are interested in what God possesses and not who he is. We have a lot of prodigals in waiting who are obsessed with the things of God and bored by the God of the things. You love the blessings, yet you fail to obey the blesser. Normalize seeking the blesser before the blessing. Interested in the what and disinterested in the who. The Bible then says the man went into prodigality. And as he returns, he says, make me thy servant. Take note, in the introduction, he said, give me. But in conclusion, he says, make me. His point of departure is epitomized by entitlement. Yet his point of return is epitomized by development. Be careful of exhibiting entitlement before your development. Lest you use that which was meant to bless you, to kiss you. May God bless you. Amen.